there's currently over 65 million forcibly displaced people around the world. Many of these people are refugees. Uh, and contrary to what we think or what we see in the news, many of the refugees end up going to developing countries. So we want to understand the economic consequences, the costs, the benefits, the winners and the losers of hosting these refugee populations. So we want to understand the gender implications of hosting refugees, because we might think that hosting refugees can have an impact on, on daily activities, such as collecting firewood and water. Uh, refugees are competing for resources, and women are, ha are having to compete with refugees, may mean more time at these activities. We may also think that refugees bring casual labor, which some women may be able to use in their daily activities, and it would free up time for these women to go into other more productive activities. We have data uh, from Caguera, a region in Tanzania, which was the region that received most of the refugees from the 1990s conflict in Rwanda and Burundi. We have data from host households from 1991, before the refugees came in, and in 2004 and 2010. So we are able to follow with these households on what happened before and after the refugees had come in. We find that our results depend on the skill level of these women. The less skilled women end up spending more time on daily activities like household chores and farming. And these are probably the women that are competing with some of the resources are, that are being used by the refugees. The more skilled women, on the other hand, benefit in the sense that they tend to be engaged more in outside employment. And they might be the ones that are probably benefiting from the casual labor that is brought by the refugees. The policy takeaway is that the implications of hosting refugees are not gender neutral. And we also need to take into consideration the skill level of the population, because as we know, they may be winners and losers of hosting refugees. Mm -hmm.